洪水ですね。津波じゃありません。山から。川。大谷川から。全部多分。国道に向けて出てます。自分の車も水没してますので。めちゃくちゃですね。
At least 64 people are dead and 44 missing following record torrential rain in western and central part of the country. More than 2 million people have been ordered to evacuate their homes. Tens of thousands of rescue workers, police and military personnel are pulling people to safety. And the weather authority has issued its highest level warning for affected areas. The bad weather is also affecting local transportation systems. Trams in Osaka city center are out of service. Authorities have maintained special weather warnings for three prefectures on the main island of Hongshu, down from the previous five. They are also urging vigilance against the landslides, rising rivers and strong winds. More heavy rain is expected on Sunday. A village close to being completely submerged underwater. Houses flooded, people stranded, rescue work and operations going non-stop. No. There were more than 10 villagers, including the elderly and children, who picked the boat with ropes and picked them up. Many are still coping with the aftermath. The flood started to rise around 2.30 this morning. Water came into the house after I woke up. My father-in-law is more than 60 years old. He said he had never seen a flood as big as this. Despite nobody being injured, the aftermath has left a scene of chaos and destruction. Miles away in Fujian province, streets have turned into waterways, vehicles waiting to be pulled out. The rain poured down since 12.30 in the morning. Water levels reached above 30 centimeters. The whole road is submerged. And it's not just houses and streets. Crops and farmlands have been decimated. Rain caused a landslide in Xishui County of Guizhou, cutting up electricity, while roads and clean drinking water for 100 households were also affected. More rain is expected until Sunday, with authorities warning regions to brace for yet another downpour. Xin Tianyuan, CGTN. Lên từ nhau đó trẻ ơi Ơ tụi cả mẹ chị bao chai chị đến đâu cái ơi Lên từ nhau đó trẻ
Η καταστροφή μας! Η καταστροφή μας είναι αυτή! Η καταστροφή μας! Η καταστροφή μας είναι! Eva, e e e e o turnado assalto e não gostei até que não para.
o tornado, o asfalto, é? e, 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 e. Стълбовете, брат, че това почва да чупи стълбовете камиони. Опа! Ние тук имаме езеро. Ти забелязвам. Айде да си ходят тия коли. Газови бутилки. Е, бе, сико што? А што на фриги? Сико што на дня се зо? Алорто, алорто.
More than 30 homes have been evacuated near Greater Manchester as firefighters continue to battle a blaze in the hills of Saddleworth Moor. The Greater Manchester Police have declared the blaze a major incident as the fire has continued to spread since Sunday night. We decided to call a major incident and by calling a major incident that's kind of the trigger point which brings multi-agencies together um, to talk about how best to deal with the situation collectively. So the major incident will stay in place for the time being um, but that doesn't mean the fire is any worse, it just means that we want to continue to work with partners uh, to deal with this situation. The smoke from the blaze is visible from 13 kilometres away. Schools were closed on Wednesday and residents have been told to stay indoors. The police have yet to establish the cause of the blaze. Oh my God. Look at this frightening video. This was taken in Des Moines late Saturday night. A woman stuck inside her car with her two kids when she finally decides to get out and try to make a run for it. You can see the water looks like a rushing river around her leg. A weekend of torrential rain has caused historic flooding around the Des Moines, Iowa area. As of this morning, most rivers and creeks crested, sending floodwaters into homes and businesses as well. This video was recorded by members of a youth sports team staying at a hotel in Urbandale, Iowa. You can see floodwaters came rushing right through the doors of the pool room. Much of Houston was underwater today. Up to seven and a half inches of rain fell in parts of the city. The water was nearly waist high and cars were going nowhere. Highways were shut down as water pooled near overpasses. The city's Freedom Over Texas concerts were canceled, but fortunately tonight's fireworks show is still on. Back in the U.S., firefighters are battling more than 60 large wildfires in the West. One of the most destructive fires over the last several days is in Goleta, California. That's near Santa Barbara. It's burned 80 acres, damaged or destroyed at least 20 structures. 
and forced as many as 2,500 people out of their homes. And it's only 5% contained. Carter Evans is in Goleta with the latest. The fast moving fire exploded late Friday night in the town of Goleta, north of Santa Barbara. Flames quickly jumped from home to home. When the flames raced through here, they were driven by winds gusting up to 40 miles per hour, blowing those embers through the air. You can see some of them flying now. They landed on rooftops, and there was nothing firefighters could do. This home may be a total loss. What's the goal? Keep it from spreading? Yeah, just try and knock it down as best we can. Try and salvage what we can. We know this is somebody's life behind us. As fire burned through the community, more than 1,000 people were evacuated at a moment's notice. At least 20 structures burned. But Patty Driscoll stayed behind and grabbed a garden hose to try and save her home of 30 years. When you look up here, you really can tell how close it was. Yeah, so I was just standing right here. As far as and and as far as this hose would take me, and that was it. Hot, windy weather is fueling fires across the state. This one in San Diego Friday burned 20 homes and injured a firefighter. Governor Jerry Brown declared a state of emergency for the Klamathon fire burning near the Oregon border. It's still out of control, scorching 21,000 acres so far. One person was killed. And this fire east of Los Angeles forced 500 campers and residents to evacuate as flames closed in. As I was coming out, I felt the heat. The heat was so tremendous. It was, it was just like almost burning me up because we were just right there on the side of the road. This is just one of many homes that burned in Goleta. The governor has now declared a state of emergency here as well. Firefighters, they're trying to put out hot spots today, just trying to get ahead of this fire before the wind picks up again. Rena? Carter Evans in California. Tens of millions of people are sweltering tonight, stuck in a dangerous heat wave that is scorching a vast swath of North America. Much of the eastern United States is sweltering in another day of 35 degree heat, and over 100 million Americans are being told to stay inside and keep cool this July 4th holiday. In Canada, the sixth day of a heat wave has been deadly. Twelve deaths in Montreal are being blamed on the heat, and in Quebec's eastern townships, five people have died. In Montreal, records were smashed on Monday when it hit 36.6 degrees. With the humidity, that feels more like 40-plus degrees. The stifling heat 
won't release its grip. And as Mike Armstrong explains, the longer it persists, the more serious a public health issue it becomes. This is the worst I've ever seen. Christina Vozenko has her fingers crossed. Her second floor apartment has four air conditioners running, but none of them well. And she's hoping they don't give out. If my air conditioners clonk out, like, that's it. It's over. There's not going to be an air conditioner for sale anywhere. Like, people are already fighting over fans. In weather like this, a simple window air conditioner can be the difference between life or death. It's not about comfort, but survival. According to public health officials in Montreal, of all the deaths being attributed to this heat wave, not one person had an air conditioner. Their apartments were unlivable. We have temperatures ranging from 33 to 46 degrees um, in their living space um, when the paramedics go by. And so it is a matter of life and death. From At 46 degrees, you're not going to last long. The city of Montreal ramped up its response Tuesday, sending firefighters and police officers door to door to check on people. More than 12,000 homes and apartments have been visited. Emergency calls to Montreal's ambulance service jumped this week, about 30% over what it usually gets. They put extra paramedics on the road, more people in dispatch, and it's asking the public not to call 911 unless it's an absolute emergency. Well, it's we have to. We have to because we're too busy. This intense heat is very hard on my breathing. Now, the people most at risk in this weather are seniors and other people with underlying medical conditions. Their bodies have more trouble getting rid of the heat. Older people have a decreased sweat response, so they can't produce as much sweat. And they don't feel thirst as much, so they don't hydrate themselves. So that puts them at a double risk for uh, adapting to extra hot and humid conditions. Now, the mobilization in Montreal may be paying off. A heat wave in this city in 2010 killed more than 100 people. But public health officials say this one isn't over yet. Things get progressively worse the longer it goes on, and tomorrow could be the worst day of all. Mike Armstrong, Global News, Montreal.